me today I'm a little friend this is my boyfriend Rashad how y'all doing <laughs> <laughs> look my friend said today she was like oh you must have forgot about your friends since you have a new boyfriend I'm like we've been dating for a really long time it's been a little over a year how you feel you liking it loving it okay we just went on vacation to Panama City Beach this past weekend for Labor Day, for the holiday. It was my first time going on a vacation. I'm 27, he's like 67. So I'm like, his experience is a little bit, he has a little bit, he has a little bit more experience than I do. It was so nice. It was his idea, so why did you want to go there? Well, I felt like, uh... For one, we'll talk about, uh, you know, cost and value and everything. It's a cheap getaway if you're in the Atlanta area. Um, or in Alabama. It's not yeah, far from Alabama. Not far from Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, but from Atlanta, it's about four and a half. That thing said five hours and 18 minutes. When I drove back, guess what? <sighs> well, it depends on how you drive. Five hours. Oh, yeah. It depends on how you drive and also when you have, like, an attentive person that's like a passenger and not somebody that sleeps three out of the five hours. Yeah. What was she talking about? M mind you, when he drove there, I was up the entire time. The last 10, 20 minutes of the ride, I fell asleep. Tell, tell me I'm lying. I was up the entire time. Talking to you, engaging with you, making sure you was awake and alert. She we could have been in the ditch somewhere. He wouldn't have known. She did. Mm-hmm. My apologies. So then when we first got there, we couldn't check in to our Airbnb until four o'clock, which I thought was ridiculous. So we went to this place, which I thought was so nice, called... Uh, Pineapple Willie's. Pineapple Willie's, <laughs> yes. Um, it's a restaurant, but picture it being like more of a upscale uh, wet Willie's. It sits right on the beach, got a nice view. Um, of the water and everything, good food. Well, we got there, we got so lit. It was so early in the morning and we was taking shots. I spilled a whole glass of water on the table. It was just like party foul. I was so embarrassed. Yeah, everybody saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, sorry But you played it nicely though, you played it off. I did, didn't I? What did I do? I don't even know. I, I think I just go into survival mode and I don't even know what I'd be saying to Man, save myself. She grabbed all the napkins. <sighs> and it was a guy that was walking by right when I spilled it that worked there that ended up having like this big old rag. And it's, he didn't even say nothing to me. He just walked past and just handed me the rag. I'm like, oh, oh, thanks. Almost like that happens often. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, these niggas is drunk. Now this one to get interesting. We get to the Airbnb, which was right on the beach. The main thing that sold us was it had a balcony that literally overlooked the beach. So you could just open it up in the morning and we we're like, okay, bet. And then the price was like, oh, okay, let's lock this in as soon as we can. But whole communication with the lady the entire time, the months leading up to the trip, she was sending us like all these, she was very, um, you know, alert. She, she was sending us emails periodically, giving us all the details. So I was like, oh, okay, she's really on it. And she um, put in one of the emails, like how to get in the parking deck um, and all the instructions and that sort of thing. And then also in the email was letting us know that once we enter the room, we'll find our parking pass, which you have to have in order to park in the parking garage. And you get these wristbands that you have to keep on your wrist the entire time that you're there, just so they know that, okay, you're, you're here, you're renting the place out or whatever, because it's like a condo building. So we get to the place and I have Rashad stay in the car. I'm like, I'm gonna run up to the room real quick, get the parking pass, you just stay right here. I get in the room and when I open the front door, it's like a foyer area and then it's two separate doors. So when I first walked into the foyer area, the first door was wide open and it was like a whole family in there. And when they saw me, the father was like, close the door, her, you know, close the door. 
So that's when I realized, okay, it's one condo. She just split it up and is renting out one side and renting us the other side. I go to our door, the door is open. Now in the email, she gave us a code that's, you know, put the code in your door and the door will open, but the door was already open. So I go in there and I'm looking all over and I realize we don't have the side with the kitchen. We only have a room, a bathroom, and the balcony, which, I mean, it wasn't so bad. I mean, if you're going to a hotel, you ain't really got a kitchen like that's that. All gonna, yeah, that's yeah. all you're going to get is the room and the bathroom. So I'm looking around like a crazy person. Mind you, I'm a little, we didn't been drinking now. Okay, keep that in mind. I'm looking around the room. I'm looking at everything, looking in the bathroom, drawers, everything. I don't see no parking pass. I don't see no wristbands. I come out the room. I go to the foyer area, and there was a table in the foyer, and there was a brown envelope, but it was empty. So automatically, I'm like, oh, these people done took our wristbands. The door was open. They, As soon as they saw me, they tried to hurry up and close the door, you know, and they didn't look like us. So, you know, I already was like, okay, this is a smell of fishy. And the lady who we was renting from didn't look like us. So, you get, what she's <laughs> you get my drift. Before I call Rashad, I called the lady like two or three times. And she was, it was going straight to voicemail. So I'm like, oh, great. You know, like this is about to be a total stump. So then after I called Rashad, I said, this is what's going on. I'm gonna try to reach her a couple more times, but I'm gonna go knock on the other people's door and figure out if they done took the wristband, I'm gonna ask some questions. So I went and knocked on the door or whatever and the, the father, the older gentleman came to the door and was kind of like, you know, can I help you? You know, is there a problem? Cause he heard me on the phone. I'm in the foyer talking to him like, I don't see no wristbands, the envelope empty. I don't know what's going on. I asked him, I'm like, hey, we're checking in here. She says she left us <laughs> some wristbands and a parking pass, all that stuff. So he proceeds to show me this big old envelope that says like the condominium's name, it says the rental company's name, and like a really nice envelope like saying welcome and all this type of stuff. And he's like, well, yeah, we got this, but you know, we had our stuff in here, but it wasn't enough in here for us and you. So then I'm looking like, okay. I called the lady again, she didn't answer. Long story short, now I'm calling him because now I'm like, I need you to come up here and act a fool. Like, I need you to come up here and ask some questions because these people, yeah, which he did not do. <laughs> Didn't have to. But I called him, I'm like, baby, I don't know what's going on. These people tried, they got me messed up. They done took our stuff. I need you to come up here and regulate. Like, I don't care, leave the car, leave everything, just come on. Like, I'm already pissed at this point. I'm, I'm already at the point of no return before he even comes upstairs. How was I when you came upstairs? <laughs> she was pissed, man pissed. When I got up there, I looked around at probably the same thing that you had already done. Kind He's playing around. private eye. He's looking in the envelope. He got it open. He looking yeah. all in. I'm like, it's nothing in there. I already told you it's nothing in there. They came to the door and... But who they, who they send when they came to the door? When you knocked on the door and they heard your voice, who they gonna send to the door? Well, they didn't even have to knock on... I didn't have to knock on the door. Oh, yeah, they just, they just came to the door because they heard the the band boys. Yeah, and, uh, but, and, but they also heard me acting a fool in the foyer because right. I'm on the phone with him like, baby, I need you to come up here because I just talked to the people. They saying they ain't having a... So they already knew like, oh man, she calling her man to come up here. Like what's about to happen? But the funny thing was that when they opened the door, the mm -hmm. man, I guess that came to the door and had all this aggression mm -hmm. when I wasn't around, he was standing back like, and let his wife do all the talking or whoever yeah yeah he was looking all he did not want to talk to him he was looking all like lady came out she was like you guys get everything okay did you find no you hear me out here hollering you know everything ain't okay i didn't have to do what she thought that i was gonna do i'm glad he didn't have to because it probably would have ruined our trip but at the same time yeah, you don't, you don't. that's how they be trying us you know airbnb the whole time they're corresponding with you they can't see your picture. That keeps mm -hmm. people from like uh, discrimination, like, oh, I'm not gonna rent to this person because it's a group of black guys or whatever. But once you secure the room, then your picture pops up. So I'm not gonna say it was a racial thing. Maybe she just forgot, but 
you prepared these people's stuff. Like it's literally the same room just split into two. So how you get, they got a whole welcome packet. It was like six or seven of them in, in that, on that side. It's only two of us. You were able to prepare a whole packet with six or seven wristbands and a parking pass, probably more than one, but we had nothing, like nothing at all. And then I'm calling you, you not answering the phone. Supposedly she did that. I still think them people stole took it the stuff. because our door was open. Right, I still think they did that. But, but even still, when when she finally called me back and I said, hey, well, you know, I've been trying to get in contact with you because this is what's going on. She was like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll come bring you, I'll come bring it to you. I feel like if she would have left it there, and they took it, wouldn't she be like, well, I left it in the room for you. Are you sure you didn't? Or I left it right here for you. Look again, double check. If not, I'll contact, you know, just to make sure. Like, no, she was like, okay, well, I'll just bring you, I'll, bring, I'll get it for you. I'm on the beach. It'll be about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, my behind. It took her an hour and a half. Either that or she already knew. Like, she probably knew them folks. Yeah, it's probably, probably said, her hey, people. We need to grab you know, these. Oh, need, go in the room. Here's the code. Yeah, it's some extra ones in there. You know what I'm saying? That's why she wasn't surprised. And she had the nerve to have an attitude. When she finally arrived at the room, she brought the stuff, but like on the parking pass, you have to fill out the date or, you know, what room you're staying in, uh, how long you're going to be there, all type of stuff. I opened the door. She's like, yeah, I don't have a ballpoint pen. So here, here's the parking pass. It's blank. I don't have a pen. And here's your wristbands. Bye. When I first walked in, they had their door like wide open. And as soon as they saw me, the guy was like, close that door. Would you close that door? Go ahead and close that door. I came inside, but I don't see a parking pass. I don't see any wristbands. And meanwhile, I'm realizing that the email that we were sent said that it was supposed to be two wristbands and a parking pass for each suite. So I'm keeping that in mind. And I'm peeping in his room. They got way more than two people in there. It was like five or six people that I that I could see. They know they took our stuff. From there, uh -huh. we changed up and put on some proper attire to go down to the, uh, the beach and hit the sand. So we went down and posted up in the uh, cabana chairs. Man, we had our speaker. Up it was our... nice. Before we even got on the road, we went to the liquor store and everything. So we came with like liquor for the room and stuff, which was really a grand idea in retrospect. Mm -hmm. The next day was like our more eventful day. So we're like, let's get back to the room. Let's relax. And one thing I did like about what you did, babe, is the itinerary. I like the fact that you kind of took the initiative and like planned everything out. So like every day he was like, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do da 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 And I'm like, ah, okay. It was a team effort. You know, she took care of the booking and I took care of the I did, see, mm -hmm. itinerary. Mm -hmm. I took care of something else, She did. <laughs> <laughs> We were going to this water park called Shipwreck Island, mm -hmm. which was so much fun, by the way. We didn't get our tickets in advance, so we we knew we had to be there like before it opened, as soon as it opened, so we can get our tickets because we didn't want to be waiting all day in line, and we wanted to get in and get out. Like we wanted to ride the rides, not be waiting in line for the rides, and then get out. You know, as soon as we had our fun, which we did. We made we did a really good time in. Really good time. We got in the park. We went to uh, this concession and they had pizza. Pizza. And so while we're ordering, the people that work there, like they're all like frantic, like, oh, oh. And the one girl is trying to take our order, but she's like this. And you said, you want what? You want, you want what? what, you, what, what, you, what, what, what? We're like, like, what's, what's going, going on? on? It was a hornet in there the size of <laughs> this class. Like, no Literally. lie. I wish I got a picture of it. The thing was like this big. Mm-hmm. Huge. Big old head, big wings, and then what the guy said. I think that's one of those Japanese murder hornets. I'm like, get away from me, move, get, move back. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty certain it's the Japanese murder hornet. It's like, get how do you know away. that? Just get my piece in her, yeah. National Geographic. So, of course, they get the big old black man from the back that worked probably worked the kitchen to come up. I think he was the manager. Child, listen, he was the only black person up in there that I saw. Yeah, I think he was the manager. How you know he was the manager? Because we saw him. Well, I I saw him later on, like uh -huh. standing around the park with his hand on the hip. Whoa. He was on his break. <laughs> <laughs> he met the manager at the park. You good? The manager okay. All right. At the right. concession stand. Hey, you good? Ooh, I'm Having a good time. All right. You're Fantastic. stupid. Right. His smoke break. Anyway, he comes and saves the day and gets the hornet up out of there, but with a cup. 
That was very interesting. I've never seen a, a hornet or a bee or anything that big. Oh, and sidebar, I know this has nothing to do with this, but Florida and, and Trump, these Trump supporters, they were everywhere. It was signs everywhere. Vote for Trump, vote for Trump, save America, vote for Trump, vote for Trump. They had like a rally in the parking lot. Remember that one night we, we were driving by and it was like all these pickup trucks with the flag sticking out the bed of the truck mm -hmm. and they're just woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, driving around. I'm like, we gotta, we gotta get up out of here. We went straight to the room. We went straight to the room. Like, uh-uh, it's late. It was like 11 o'clock. We're like, mm. Let's get off the trip mm -hmm. right now. Go on the trip and never come back. The last trip you ever take. The water park was so much fun. However, <laughs> the last ride we <laughs> went on. Oh, man. Oh, I'm having a flash. Just you. <laughs> well, the last ride was serious. It's kind of like the cliffhanger at Whitewater. If you guys have been to Whitewater, slide it go straight down. But this one went like around and then straight down, but it was super fast. It's in a tunnel. You don't you realize. You can't see. It's pitch black and the water is just hitting you in the face. Like you you can almost drown in the, <laughs> in Listen, the slide. It was this little boy. Cause we're standing at the foot of the stairs. We're like, dang. We gotta go all the way up here. All right, we don't know. And then the boy said, "What are you gonna chicken out?" I'm like, "Boy, go." He went down first. When I got out, everybody knew I didn't like it. Like everybody was like, "Yay, good job!" And I was just sitting there, couldn't see nothing. I was like, "I, I ain't like that." Mm -mm, mm -mm. But I never heard my own self like make the noises that I was making while I was inside of it. And I, even though I was scared, like I was thinking in my head, like, "Why are you sounding like that?" I was like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> like, wow, what's happening? What are you doing? Like James Brown. Shipwreck, y'all gotta rethink that. I don't know, y'all gotta re revise, go back to the drawing board on that one. I ain't, I wasn't a fan. already falling apart. Look. Look how it's embarrassing me. Go cooperate today. I'm gonna have to uh, take it out. Out. <laughs> oh. Thank you guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so the bun didn't make it the whole day. She had to come down because we went on these slides and she was just looking bad. So we're getting ready to get some funnel cakes and then we're gonna head back to the room to relax. It's still pretty early. So we're gonna take a nap, probably chill around the room. Until later, we're gonna go to a really nice dinner. Oh yeah, that was cool. I'm gonna let you tell the next part because uh, the next part is all you, player. Oh, me? Uh-huh. I'm gonna Shit. do that. I mean, went straight to the room, ate our funnel cake. And, I'm talking uh, about the night. Then what happened that night? So, mm -hmm. that night we went to this restaurant called Dreamers. The actual decor, the building, it was nice, you know, they had palm trees outside. They had Lamborghinis inside the restaurant, outside the restaurant, that was pretty dope. According to Yelp, <laughs> supposed to be in the second best restaurant on, on, the, on the beach. But when we got there, 
they were out of a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very aesthetically pleasing mm -hmm. spot, and the waitress we had, she was very nice and bubbly, you know. She didn't look like us, but she was very, you know, hello. <laughs> Do that part again? I don't know if I can. I might fart. <laughs> it, I had to hold it in when I did. It was so much pressure on my stomach when I just did that, that I just had to lace. If I do it again. <laughs> I I ordered a, a ribeye, right? He was so excited about, by the way. Ready to eat. It's gonna be good. Ribeye. They said it's the second best, you know, spot on the beach. I got this just the sirloin, the eight ounce. Oh, uh, let me preface this by saying this was I have not eaten meat in like four months at all. I haven't even cheated. Like even when I wanted to cheat, I just didn't do it. So this was supposed to be my like, okay, we on vacation. I can eat a little bit of something, something. Get the sirloin. We be cute mm -hmm. with it, you know. The coffee. Chopping it. But not me. I was ready. But let me tell you what yeah, happened. Yeah, you, you had a flash. Let me tell you what happened. I got you. Go ahead. Tell the story. I got you. You having a flash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you what happened. So she leaves. She comes back like five minutes later. And she's like, oh, well, um, I'm sorry. But, you know, we don't have any more ribeye. You know, somebody just ordered one right before you. I ended up ordering what she got and... Boo tea cheeks. Three, <laughs> three syllables. Boo tea cheeks. <laughs> Big booty butt cheeks. <laughs> booty, 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 cheeks! That's terrible. And the waitress was telling us, oh, this is a family owned restaurant. See, this is the owner right there. And that's his wife. The wife was coming out the back with a waitress, apron on, serving stuff. They had the son in the back folding silverware, rolling silverware. Oh, it's a family-owned restaurant. He about to open five more. This place, that place, this place. <laughs> what y'all like? <laughs> what you say? Y'all didn't get this one together first. Talk about opening another one. You gotta get the first one Man, together. Y'all ain't even got enough on, on hand to even serve everything on the menu on a busy night. Like, y'all shouldn't be thinking. And this on is being in my Saturday. city. Like y'all. No, that was on a Sunday. Sunday. Night. Y'all trying to go to Atlanta? Atlanta will rip you apart. You will go from four stars to one star in a millisecond. Half like, a star yeah. for me. <laughs> like, Google, no Google route. They just took you off. Wait, <laughs> I know we said this was such a good trip, but we just keep talking about shit that went bad. The fries and the appetizer, they literally had fries. They took Kraft's macaroni and cheese sliced cheese, like literally with sandwich cheese, Put it on the fries and look like they put it in a broiler real quick and like melted it. And you can literally see like the squares of cheese. I'm like, oh my yeah. God, it was terrible. No salt. I'm not putting no hate or no salt in the game for dreamers, but they get a thumbs down because <laughs> Mm. Food was not good and they didn't have anything. The best thing about the trip for me was um, I think that was the most uninterrupted time that we've spent together since we've been together. We work, we both worked the, this entire pandemic, like not a day off mm -hmm. at all. So like we see each other every day, but like we be tired. <laughs> it's really nice to take the time away, take the break and spend that time with you. Mm-hmm. And it was really great because we, we got to have moments like even at the dinner, although the food was horrendous, we ha got to have a moment to like sit and chat. I mean, we talk all the time about stuff all the time, every different subject matter. It, just learning each other on a deeper level and also like testing the waters, like can we be around each other for this amount of time? Yeah, like, I was scared. Like blending finances and like being able to agree on the itinerary, like things like that, like no arguments and stuff like that. That's like. That's big. Yeah. Relationships aren't new for me, but this as healthy of a relationship is new for me. So, you know, I promise myself certain things and I'm sure you did as well. Like things that you don't want to go back to, like just certain requirements and standard of what you want to do going forward once you find yourself in a better place and then finding each other. And it was just nice. Like my mom asked me today about it again, cause I don't know if she's like living vicariously through, I don't know. 
And I was like, mom, I, honestly, it was the best. Like, I don't have one complaint at all. Besides her not having a parking pass and I, I stuff under the food. I thought you were talking another language just then. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> just the energy and being able to like, we put that patio to get use, honey. Close your eyes. You see? <laughs> hey. Like, even the day we were leaving, he had this wonderful idea of us just like, before we in a haste and in a fury get up out of here, let's go sit on the patio for 10, 15 minutes, let's reflect, let's talk to each other about, you know, what we're gonna do when we go back home. And we like, we set like new goals that we're, we're doing like right now for what we want to do when we got back home. It was just like a reset, like a reset button. However, we came home, we got right back to work, which I like, I wish I would have taken another day off and just sat for a second. A week. I will say my favorite part of the trip, uh, I'd have to say the last night um, we went to this restaurant that I don't even know what the name of it is. Oh my God, guys, we got so drunk. <laughs> right, so let me back up a little bit. Let me rewind, let me rewind, let me rewind. Ooh, my butt is having a flash. <laughs> Baby, go ahead. Before we went to that spot, we were hanging out before then and we went and we walked the pier so they had this pier that goes out way out to the middle of the water and you can walk it you can take your drinks there's people out there fishing and just hanging out but we actually watched the sun go down i kind of missed the last little bit because we were in deep conversation. He was looking into my eyes, y'all. He was looking deep into my eyes. He was whispering sweet nothings in my ear and he just got so lost, he didn't even know where he was at. All that. <gasps> it was really, really refreshing. It was, it was nice, it was beautiful. Um, and then from there it started to rain a little bit and mm -hmm. so we headed back towards the land or I guess the beach, because mm -hmm. we were on the, the pier. Got another drink, a little hut place. Yeah, we got a drink before, we, first of all, we were drinking in the room, then we got drinks before we even went to the pier, mm -hmm. which were hitting, they were hitting. Mm -hmm. While we're on the pier, I'm like, woo, woo. You know, I'm already looking, the jellyfish starting to morph into something else in the water. Then, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't say that to you because I didn't want you to think, but in my mind, I was like, ooh, what's that? You know, but I didn't say that to you because you were in the process of whispering the sweet nothings and I just didn't want to throw you off track, but like, you know, anyway. We went back to Margaritaville. And got some drinks mm -hmm. to go from there. So keep in mind, every place in Panama City right now is doing to-go drinks, I guess, maybe because of the pandemic. I don't know if they were doing that before. I don't remember them doing that before. By this you. time, we were slizzard, okay? Like, I'm not even gonna put it back to you, like. And I think, I I can't speak for you, but I was so determined to get drunk because that's all I wanted to do. Like, he kept saying, oh, when I'm on vacation, I get drunk, I can drink all day. I get so drunk, I can, I'm good, I can. He did it the whole time we was there. He was like, no, I'm driving. <laughs> Which I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like, well, where's this the turn up vacation, Rashad, that you was talking about? Because I ain't seen him yet. I saw my father. So the last night we were there, <laughs> we just, we was just drinking, okay? So we were so slurred that we finally get to the next restaurant. He couldn't even finish the drink because we still, we walk into the, the restaurant when they finally said it was time for us with the drinks that we got from Margaritaville. You couldn't even finish your drink. He get, I'm like, oh, I'll take it. Being drunk, drank his drink and my drink, and we ordered drinks at the restaurant. The drinks were like, you ever seen those little, um, if you ever gone to New Orleans, like those big old drinks that they have, you could walk around with. Like that was the size of the drink that we ordered at the restaurant. It get time to pay. I don't have my debit card. I done left my debit card at Margaritaville. It's raining now at this point. But I'm like, I gotta go get my debit card. I'm on a mission. I leave you at the table. What you was doing at the table when I was gone? I'm watching the game. <laughs> he didn't care. First of all, it's dark. First it's of nighttime. 
No, I, I said that I would go get it, but you said, hey, they're probably going to ask for my ID if it's still there. Yeah, that's true. I, I go like on a mission like Carmen San Diego. It's pitch black dark. It's raining and I have to walk because it's like, you know, an outdoor spilly. It's like an outdoor thing. So I had to walk from this restaurant, go to Margaritaville, cross the street, and there's drunk people all over the place. Literally, like <laughs> two minutes away. <laughs> no, it's it literally not, like, here's a restaurant, there's a crosswalk, and then it's Margaritaville. It's not that far. It was right there, but still, I wasn't in my right, I was drunk, okay? So I, anything could happen. And then he would have been so lost in the game, he would have looked up, 45 minutes would have passed by, and they say, you know, somebody's walking around with my face on a milk carton. He wouldn't have known. Thank God they had my car. Thank God, because that would have made the trip. That would have sobered me up. Why are you looking at me like that? What happened? Come on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just got a good seat in the camera. Just looking at you. No, what you see? Anyway, we finish up there. We're both drunk. And we drove. So this whole trip, we driving place to place. We still got to drive back to the room. I, I don't remember that drive back to the room. Yeah, Do you? She, she, I drove. That don't mean you remember it. That means your body remember where we was going. That don't mean you remember it. I remember. But see, I'm not a sloppy drunk. I'm a fun drunk. She was very fun. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you, you're not disgusted when I'm drunk. Like, oh my God. Mm-mm. I'm not with you either. That's why I was always like apprehensive about you getting drunk. Like I never wanted to see you drunk because if I didn't like it, I didn't. I was scared of not liking you when you were drunk. Like the mm. potential of not liking you when you were drunk, and that would have really ruined things. So you didn't see it. That's a good night. Mm -mm. No, and I felt safe. Like I didn't feel like, oh my god, I can't drink because one of us gotta be sober because he don't know how to. That's the worst. It was good. You were in good hands. Yes, and we made it back to the room safely. Everything we just discussed, mm -hmm. that was my favorite night. Mm -hmm. That was my mm -hmm. original that was your statement. Favorite, that was your favorite night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my favorite mm -hmm. night. Started out at the pier. And um, again, like you it said. It was a really good night, babe. We had opportunity to have deep thought conversation and bond and all that stuff. It was just a good time. Oh, and <laughs> let me say, let me say. I don't even know what she about to say. Let me say that the food at whatever name of that place is. Oh, it was bomb. was great. Baby, it was a great trip. It was a great trip. And I learned a lot about this person. And I encourage you, like, if you're dating somebody and you feel like you can only be around them for a certain amount of time or you feel frustrated or you don't. You just don't feel like you could be your best self and have fun with that person. It's like more frustration than it is like pleasant. Mm -hmm. I uh, implore you to reevaluate the relationship that you're in. Like being in a relationship and compromise is hard, but it should still be enjoyable. I'm gonna drive home like, yeah, we're gonna put a little group trip together for everybody and for next year and see how that goes. Maybe we'll go back to. Mm -hmm.